So user generated content has advantages and disadvantages. Most of these are fairly logical, but just to cover them uh, and to reflect upon them. When we have commercial content, which is content that has been purchased um, from a publisher or um, a, a creator of um, you know, commercially available content, previously this was pretty much all that libraries had. Uh, the advantage was that this content was available nationally and was standardized. So if you encountered a book at one library in, and then you went to another library which had the same book, that book would be the same uh, no matter which library you went to. Also buying from publishers um, and other content creation creators means that you are guaranteed that the product ha is of a particular quality. So books had be, have been through the editing process, um, there's been um, artists that have created the cover images, things have been through many checks and balances before they've actually been made for sale. Uh, also alongside that is the professional metadata. The fact that items are, are standardised and there'd be many copies of each item which would be distributed across the state or the country or in fact the globe means that librarians can catalogue the, um, the item using a centralised pool of metadata which has been created professionally. So we have standard vocabularies and it's a matter of the librarian allocating the correct metadata so that the item is easily findable and also is findable no matter where you are, which library you're in, the, the metadata will remain the same. The disadvantages is that global and big brands are not necessarily able to relate to local users. So if we remember back to when every library had um, either the World Book or the Britannica, um, the Australian students would not necessarily be able to find highly local or specific data or information when they were researching because they only had these uh, encyclopedias as sources of information and these were very much um, representative of the countries where they had been published. So World Book was a very, um, had a very American centric view and interpreted uh, most articles through the lens of America. So even though uh, the information was correct, it wouldn't have the local uh, context or the local uh, knowledge or insights. Also, when you have something that's been professionally produced and the library is the final, uh, is like the end point on the supply chain, the item may well be quite expensive because you've had to go through the entire process of purchasing the content, editing the content, formatting the content into a, a saleable a form, like such as a book, creating the book, printing the book, publishing the book, selling the book, all of these things add to the cost of the actual item. And so you end up with a very expensive supply chain and therefore the library can afford to buy less things because the more expensive the individual item, the less, uh, the least amount that their budget will extend to buying. So there's some of the disadvantages of commercial content. Ha having said that, most libraries are still going to have the majority of their collection being commercial content. User generated content has several advantages and also some disadvantages. The advantages are that it has a highly local flavour. So as we were able to say, see with the history pin, uh, we were able to gather very specific um, and unique information that related to that particular geographic location or event that was happening in the photo. Um, also the information is fresh and unique. The information that's available in one library is not necessarily going to be the same as the information in another library because it has been generated by the users of that particular library space. Although with social, the social web, users don't necessarily have to limit themselves to the library that's within their own geographic area. Um, in some respects, the information is maybe community based because you're more likely to contribute user generated data to the library that you actually use and, and interact with on a, on a regular basis. And it also has the potential to build the local economy uh, and also is low cost because you're garnering the information from the crowd. So each individual is offering just a little bit for free. And at the end of the day, that whole crowd contribute, each contributing one little bit for free means a whole lot in the end, which still didn't cost anything. 
In terms of organization and accessibility of this data, oftentimes user-generated content is organized with user tagging, which means that the user or the person generating the content selects and attaches the keywords that they think best describe the, the content so that other people might find it. And this has advantages and disadvantages also that we'll talk about on the next page. And that's why I've put user tagging spaced out a little bit because it is an advantage in that it offers a personal, um, sorry, a local and perhaps more relevant uh, keyword um, keywords. However, it also can mean that the keywords are quite unique and therefore harder to find. So there's advantages and disadvantages. The disadvantage of user-generated content really comes down to quality and the need for moderation. So when each individual is contributing information, uh, there is no necessity for them to contribute accurate or unbiased information. We would hope that they would, but there's no, um, no editorial process that the information needs to go through before it is contributed. And therefore, the information must be checked for credibility, for accuracy, for um, to make sure that it's not particularly biased in any way that um, in, and this sort of thing probably adds to the cost that was or was saved because it was sourced through the crowd. So here we're talking a little bit more about tagging uh, and taxonomies versus folksonomies. So traditionally, when we used centralized professional metadata. Uh, these were organized into a taxonomy, most the best known uh, library taxonomy being perhaps the Dewey Decimal System. So a taxonomy is a hierarchical categorization in which relatively well-defined classes are nested under broader categories. So you know how the Dewey Decimal System has the 100s, the 200s, the 300s, and they represent a broad heading. And then we narrow it down into the 910s, the 920s, which are uh, nested categories which fit underneath that broad heading, and then break it down further with each individual number for the Dewey um, classification system. So a folksonomy is a system in which users apply tags which they've generated to online items. And typically it it's to make those items easier for themselves or others to find later. Tags are key words or terms that the users have created and assigned to a piece of digital information. And you can see in this example, this photograph of a bookshelf that has been uploaded to Unsplash which is a collection of images in the public domain, has been um, given the tags book, bookshelf and read. So when any, anyone is looking for um, an image and they're looking for an image associated with the term book or bookshelf or read and they enter those words in, this image is likely to, will, will be, be returned as one of the results for their search. You can see that um, a taxonomy has, uh, an has, has a lot of control and it's top down. It's been created by um, one um, group or, or one, it's one person or company or um, a central um, source and it's been applied then across the board. It's therefore very accurate. But with this accuracy also comes a restrictiveness because it, it's impossible to change because it's been created from a, a top-down approach and therefore it's quite static. And you can see from discussions about the organization of uh, non-fiction collections, use, uh, sorry, of fiction collections using genre um, that this is a, a response to the fact that the taxonomies that were previously used are not necessarily working anymore, but they can't be changed enough. That, and this is one way of changing it, but because it's such a major change, because the previous taxonomy was so static, it's generated controversy and a lot of talk. It's also very time consuming to maintain because taxonomies are generally quite complex because they've existed for a long time and they've been um, honed and refined to such a point to meet every conceivable situation and context and therefore applying them uh, accurately can be quite time consuming. A folksonomy on the other hand where we're using uh, user generated tags has definitely got a much more democratic bottom up approach because the users are the people who are coming up with the keywords that are used. Instead of the high levels of accuracy with, uh, with taxonomies 
uh, such as, for example, the Dewey Decimal System and um, we, we have a more of a good enough approach. So book, bookshelf, read. So bookshelf will, is one word. So if someone searched for the term book and had the term shelf as a separate word, it's possible that um, not every image would come up because if it was just tagged bookshelf as one word, it, it may not come up if they search for shelf by itself. So it's a good enough tagging system. It is, however, very flexible because you can make it reflect whatever you think is the most relevant and it's constantly evolving because tags often reflect current usage and words that are of the moment, whereas uh, taxonomies have been developed along generally quite a while ago and therefore they uh, don't necessarily have the latest vocabulary. They're also very low cost because they're sourced from the crowd. Each individual is just adding a few keywords with and not charging for that. Whereas uh, we need to subscribe to authority files and things like that with taxonomies. So there are advantages, but the disadvantage is that if someone, how, what words someone feels is very relevant may not be relevant in someone else's eyes. So for example, you might use the term um, learning when you're comparing to a library, but someone who's only ever used uh, the library for leisure would never think to use the term learning when they're searching for library images. So you can see how different perspectives and different choices of keyword or tag can make a difference in a, in a folksonomy. So the social web basically allows us to flip the library. It allows the power to move from being very much centered around the librarians as the controllers of and the holders of the information and the gatekeepers uh, and allows the library to become much more uh, under the ownership and within the agency of the user, which can only be a, a great thing because that's the way that we need, would like to see libraries moving very much so and they've already moved into that space. It allows the library to connect directly with users regardless of time and space because the communication can be synchronous and asynchronous. It can be regardless of geogra geographic location and it can be 24 seven. It allows the library to communicate with the users in many different ways through many different channels. So previously we were reliant on people physically coming to the library. Now we can communicate our information and uh, share it with other people visually and through um, video and multimedia and via many different platforms. It also allows us to hear what our users want to share in a way that previously perhaps was not possible because not everyone wanted to go up and say something to the librarian, but they might feel um, more comfortable in communicating by using social media. And finally, it allows us to co collaborate with our users and embed user generated content for a richer, more responsive and more relevant collection. They're just a few ways that the social web has influenced libraries and information management. <laughs>